Hey guys, so today I'm gonna to be talking about my filming setup. This is uh, something that you guys have been asking just over and over, like what equipment I use, why I chose the equipment that I use, and what I would recommend for a beginner. So I'm gonna be showing you my uh, filming setup and just pardon the mess. Um, so we're gonna have some like B-roll cutaways or whatever so I can show you um, my setup. People have also been asking me about like my editing and all of that stuff. That to me is very different and I'll probably address that a little bit towards the end of this video, but it's not gonna be long. I don't do a lot of editing. <laughs> Pretty much just cut out portions of the video that I don't want in the final video and that's it. But I am gonna be talking about um, my camera, my lighting, my microphone, the ones that I currently use, why I use them. And then I'm gonna give you some recommendations of equipment that you can use if you're starting out. So before we jump into my current filming setup, I do just wanna say that I am in absolutely no way am I any kind of professional videographer. The only experience I have with videography is filming myself here, the occasional vlog here on YouTube for the past four years. That's it. So I'm just sharing with you my experience, um, but there are a lot of resources on YouTube um, that if you just do simple searches for the things that you're interested in, you'll come up with so much information. That's pretty much where I learned and where I did all of my research. So I just wanted to mention that. And the other thing I wanted to mention before we jump into it is that I'm a beauty YouTuber. If you guys came across this video and this is the first video you are watching of mine, hello, welcome. I'm a beauty YouTuber. So that is sort of the perspective that I am coming from. I don't really go out do like action videos per se. So the majority of my videos are me just sitting here in this room with this equipment. So yeah, I think those are just the two things that I wanted to kind of get out of the way before jumping into my filming setup. And let's start with my camera. So I use a Canon C100 Mark II. I believe this camera has been discontinued. I purchased this camera at least a year ago. I'm, I'm not sure, I'm not sure at least a year ago, maybe two years ago at this point, and I purchased it used. But this is one of the C-line cameras from Canon, and it is meant to be a video camera versus a photography camera, which is what I believe uh, many beauty YouTubers use. I think the most popular one out there that I see a lot of uh, beauty YouTubers mention is the Canon 80D, the 80D. Every time I say ADD, I feel like I'm saying ADD, but it's ADD. <laughs> um, and that happens to be a photography camera with video capabilities. So my camera is, is not a photography camera. You can take pictures off of it, but the primary usage that this camera was designed for was video and not photography and that's why I decided to go with this particular camera. It is quite expensive and I think most people out there, myself included, but most people out there would say it's probably overkill considering what I do. And again, that's just sitting here creating beauty content. But there are a few reasons why I purchased this camera versus something like the 80D or the 5D Mark IV or um, any of those other kind of like a high-end DSLRs that a lot of beauty YouTubers use. So the first reason why I got this camera is because it is a video camera. And for me, the one characteristic that I love in a video camera versus a photography camera that has video capability is that there's no file size limit. So if you take a DSLR like a Canon 80D or a 5D and you start taking video, it's gonna stop your video after about 15, 20 minutes, depending on your settings. But let's say about 20 minutes. Uh, most videos when I'm filming, I film for at least an hour. So what most cameras will do but this is not foolproof and it's very frustrating when it doesn't happen, it'll stop recording at 20 minutes and then it'll start a new file. So if you're filming for an hour, let's say, for example, you may end up with three different video files, which is okay, but it is not my favorite thing. What I find very frustrating is that sometimes it doesn't automatically start. So sometimes the camera will just stop at recording after 20 minutes. And yeah, something will flash. You'll see like the recording sign on your monitor. You'll see that kind of go away. There'll be indications that it has stopped recording. But if you're in the middle of a tutorial and you're not really looking at your camera, you're looking at the mirror and you're doing your eyeshadow and you're at a really, let's say, important or pivotal point in your tutorial and your camera stops recording, there is nothing that makes me see red faster than that happening. So before I had this camera, I did film on um, a photography camera that had video capabilities and that kept happening to me and it was making me absolutely bonkers. It just kept happening 
at the like exact worst time. It wasn't when I was just kind of talking about something and I would see it go out and be like, oh, okay, I just need to start over from that section. No, no, it was always when I wasn't looking and I was doing something really important and you know, four minutes would pass and I would look back and think, oh my God, when did this stop recording? It was so annoying and so frustrating to me that I decided at that point, I was like, I am gonna be using a video camera from now on. So that's one of the reasons why I got this uh, Canon C100. So the second reason why I got a video camera is that, um, again, because they're video cameras, they have like a very easy way of just plugging it in. If you have a DSLR camera, they're, it doesn't come with like an AC adapter. It comes with a rechargeable battery. And again, if you're sitting and recording for a long time, even if you have a backup battery, if your current battery starts to go, it'll start blinking or doing whatever. But if you're not looking and paying attention, your camera will just stop recording. In fact, it'll probably just turn off. And again, that was happening to me at the worst possible time every time I was recording. So it was either the file limit size or my battery life. There are attachments that you can connect your DSLR to make it like AC adaptable. But again, they're not made for that. I had worked with an old camera, I can't remember. It was a Canon, I can't remember the model name. Anyway, it would overheat. And when a camera overheats, it also turns off. So that was the other reason why I wanted to get a video camera is because they're meant to be plugged in to an actual like AC adapter or they have battery also. So they work very, very seamlessly, whether they're plugged in or whether they're using a battery. And I just like having it plugged in. Again, it's like something I don't have to worry about. My camera just never like mysteriously shuts off. So that's the second reason why I went with like a video camera. The third reason why I went with this particular model um, video camera, because you can get other, there's tons of different video cameras out there. But the reason why I got this one is because it takes Canon lenses. And I used to really be into photography. I have a big uh, Canon DSLR camera and I have a ton of different lenses. And I thought if I can get a camera that can utilize all of these different lenses, that is something I've already invested money into and I can use this camera body and just throw on different lenses that I have and great, like half of the work is already taken out. So that's another reason why I went with this C100 because I have a bunch of Canon lenses. It takes regular Canon like EF lenses. So I was really, really excited when I started doing research, I was really excited to find this model that took these lenses because I thought, oh my God, if I get a whole different like camera system, I'm gonna have to invest in the body and all of these lenses all over again. And lenses can be just as or even more expensive than the actual camera body. So I was very excited to be able to use lenses that I already had on this camera. So, okay, so I talked about it not turning off after 20 minutes. I talked about um, the ability for it to just kind of be plugged in. I talked about lenses. So two more reasons why I got this particular camera. And this next reason is very personal to me. So like I mentioned, I was really into photography. So I have a Canon 5D Mark II. That is a very, very old DSLR camera. They're up to like Mark IV, and I think they've even gone into some like different kinds of uh, 5Ds, like a 5DR, anyway. Um, so I have a very old Canon 5D. I love my Canon 5D Mark II. I absolutely love it. And it's a DSLR. And so the thought of me getting an 80D DSLR, which I don't even think is as powerful as this old 5D, I was like, I don't, I don't want any more like photography cameras. I just didn't want another Canon DSLR body sitting around when I already had this great um, DSLR. The reason why I don't use my 5D Mark II to video is because it doesn't autofocus. You actually have to have someone back there kind of manually focusing when it's in video mode. So that's why I can't use it for video, but I love it so much for photography that it just, in my mind, it just seemed really silly to go out and buy another photography camera to do video that's not even as nice as my 5D. So that's another reason why I decided to go with something that was like kind of completely different than a DSLR body. And then the fifth and last reason I can think of is because this is a video camera, you'll see here that there's access to a lot of the functionality that you need quick access to right on the side of this camera. So there's things like, you know, shutter speed, ISO, the aperture size, and then white balance that you can very easily access with these buttons on the side of this camera, where with a DSLR, you kind of have to dig a little bit in the menu, especially if you want to do a custom white balance. Generally, it takes a few more steps 
And those few more steps really, really add up and it just takes time out of your day. It's something that you'll probably forget doing. It's something that you'll neglect to do. And if you want really accurate looking video, you really have to customize your white balance. You really don't wanna use auto white balance. So the fact that on this camera, I can very easily with one push of one button set a custom white balance it just is such a time saver. I, it, I've gotten into the habit of just going in, setting my white balance, and I'm good to go. And when I do my swatches, I have to quickly change like the shutter speed because I'm getting up closer to the camera. Therefore, I'm getting closer to my light. It gets blown out if I don't change any of my settings. And on this camera, I can stand right up in front of the lens. I can change my shutter speed. It kind of dims everything out so you can see the swatches a little bit more clearly. So I really like having access uh, with just one button on the side of this camera and it just saves so much time instead of like digging into menus and like using like these little buttons and then it's not in an easy place. Usually, at least for Canon DSLRs, all the buttons are either at the top, they're these like little buttons by like this little uh, screen or they're on the back. And it's annoying when you're sitting in front of the camera to have to like fuss and like reach for these buttons where for me, they're right on the side here. So those quick access buttons are just Oh, are just an absolute lifesaver. So I love my camera. I absolutely love it. It is very, very big, especially compared to a DSLR. It has this big handle on the top, which is where my microphone plugs in. It's got this handle on the side. The screen you know, sticks out on the side. So it really is uh, quite bulky and it is really quite different looking from like a regular kind of DSLR, but I love it. It's basically like a set and forget. The only things I play with, like I mentioned, are the white balance and the shutter speed and that's it. Everything else is static. So that is the camera that I use. And I will list every piece of equipment that I'm talking about down below in my description box. If I can find a link to it, I will. Like I said, I think this one is old. The upgraded version of the C100 Mark II, I believe is a C200. But like I mentioned, I purchased it used, which did save me quite a bit of money. And because I'm not doing like this on the run documentary type of video where I'm like out and about and my camera's getting banged around. I knew it was basically gonna just be sitting on my tripod that a used camera was gonna be just fine for my purposes. There is one con to this camera that I have come across. And again, because I do beauty YouTube, this is very, very important. The camera, when you're using most Canon lenses, not all of them, but most Canon lenses will only focus right in the center here. So if you guys see me and I'm sitting here and when I show you swatches, I put my hand right in front of my face. I don't do this. It's because it only focuses in the center. So if I move off to the side, you see how now it's searching? because there's like nothing in the center of the screen. So now when I pop into the center, it's gonna focus on my face. So that is definitely one downside. There are certain types of Canon lenses. They're the lenses with in them. Those lenses can be used on this camera and then it will have like face autofocus. So it'll follow me. So when I do like my will I buy it videos and I have to move over to one side of the frame and like I'll pop up pictures, I actually have to swap out my lens and use that lens. It's over there. I can't see what it is. I think it's a 24 to 105 lens. I use that when I do my will I buy it videos, but then I use this lens when I film regular videos and I'm just sitting right in the center and it's fine. So anyway, that's the one downside I've come across with this particular camera. And then just a quick note of the lens that I use. So I use a 35 millimeter lens. The max aperture of this lens is 2.0. So depending on the focal length, which is the 35 number, depending on the focal length uh, will depend on how far away you want the camera from you. So the camera from me right now, I want to say is about, I want to say it's about three feet in front of me and it's a little bit higher than my face. So it's angled down a little bit. And that because of the dimensions of my room is what works for this particular setup. When I had a different setup and I was sitting kind of like long ways in my room, I could have my camera further away from me and I used a 50 millimeter lens. So the larger the number, the further away the camera has to be from you because it's basically like zooming in. But like a loose rule is like the bigger the number, the better you're going to look on the camera. So uh, for reference, portrait photographers use like an 85 millimeter lens. And the reason why they do that is because that is when the face looks the most kind of 
um, I don't want to say flat, but the most accurate in terms of all the hills and valleys of your face. The smaller the number is, so if you have like a fish eye lens, which is like, I don't know, 18 to 24, or like a 10 millimeter, which is like super fish eye, you're going to get that fish eye effect. So your nose is going to look really, really big and your face is going to look really distorted. It looks like you're looking out of like a fishbowl. So you really want like a pretty long focal length. That's when you're going to look the best. I mean, you don't want like 200 millimeter, you don't want anything that far, but 50 is great, 85 is great, but that's, your camera's pretty far away from that. So I have to use the 35, that's as far as I can get my camera away from me, and I think it looks okay, I think it looks pretty accurate, I don't think my face looks distorted, but anything shorter than this, I feel like my face looks distorted. Like when I vlog, because you're, ca you're holding the camera so close to you, it's always at about like an 18 to 24 millimeter focal length and I always feel like I look so distorted when I'm like looking in the monitor and I'm trying to hold it further away from me. So that's just a quick word about focal length and ideal focal length and what you want to shoot for, um, but it's really going to depend on the space that you have. The other question that I always get um, that I know a lot of beauty YouTubers talk about, a lot of YouTubers, a lot of videographers, even photographers talk about a lot, is how you get the blurred background. You know, to me, I think all of this is such common knowledge, but people are still really, really confused about it. The only thing that will give you a blurred background is that f-stop number. So when you buy a lens, um, like mine is 35 mm, and then you'll see an f, and then a slash, and then a number, and mine is two. So mine says 35 mm f slash two. That f number, is what's gonna determine whether or not you have a blurry background. So the smaller your f-stop number is, the more blurry your background is going to be. But also, the smaller that f-stop number is, the more expensive that lens is gonna be. So if you get a lens that has like an f1.2, which is a really small number, which actually, it's the opposite. It means the camera lenses, the eye is really, really big. That's gonna be a very expensive lens, but you're gonna have a really nice blurry background. So mine is a two. So you can see that my, you know, my flowers and my candle, they're, they're pretty blurred. They're blurred enough for me. I would maybe like it a little bit more blurred, like 1.8 I think is really, really ideal, but this is fine. Uh, this lens wasn't that expensive, so I'm happy with it. Um, it also depends on how far away you are from your background. So you wanna be as far away from your background as possible to get as much blur. So I did just wanna address that because I did get a lot of questions about you know, blurry background, how do I get a blurry background, and that's it. You just wanna get as small of an f-stop number as you can afford, essentially. <laughs> so that's the blurry background. Um, all right, I think that's all I wanted to mention in terms of the camera and the lens. Let's move on to lighting. So the light that I use is the KinoFlow Diva Light LED 30. The KinoFlow brand, they have a bunch of different lines. They have like a Celeb line, they have this Diva line. Uh, I can't think of the other names, but they are like the gold standard when it comes to video lighting. And it's because their lights are so bright, so true in tone, but it's diffused. So you can get a really, really bright light, but it'll be a spotlight. And that's the last thing you want. You're gonna look really blown out. You don't want a spotlight on your face. That's like the last thing that you want. So this Diva light is the only one that I use. I have like an overhead lighting in my room. I have like a little lamp in my room. Honestly, if I turned it off, you probably wouldn't even see the difference, but I just have those lights in my room just when I don't have my um, video light on. So this one light is the only light that I use, and that was what I was looking for. So that's why I got the 30, which is how many inches across it is. So it's two and a half feet across. This light is like the best money I have ever spent. I love this light. I think it's so important if you're doing beauty videos to invest in lighting. I'll get to what I think is the most important things to invest in and where you should start or whatever towards the end of the video, but I love this light. I absolutely love it. But it is gigantic, it is expensive, and it is really, really heavy. So I have it sitting on top of a heavy duty. It's actually a quote unquote heavy duty tripod. Uh, you cannot put this light on a normal tripod. It will just kill it. It will break it. Ask me how I know. And it is a light that unfortunately I would only recommend to those of you who have a dedicated filming area. If you have to um, put up and break down your filming setup every time, maybe you you know film in your living room or you know at your kitchen table or something, and you can't leave your equipment up. I do not recommend this light. You will not want to 
put up and take down this light. Unless you have a crew of very strong people, this is not a light that you're gonna want to put up and take down. I don't use natural light, or let me say this, I don't depend on natural light. I have three windows in this room. I have the blinds like completely drawn. Um, but some natural light definitely peeks in. And the reason why is because natural lighting is inconsistent and it's not dependable. You just don't know what the lighting is gonna be from one day to the next. And if you want to just film when you have time and you don't wanna have to worry about it, then you cannot depend on natural light. I'm not gonna get into like the settings of the light. Not that there's many, there's like temperature control and like how strong of an output you want. I have it up at 100%. I think I just have it at like the daylight setting, but it's really gonna depend on you know, your room, your surroundings, what kind of temperature you like. There's, you know, there's obviously a little bit of like personal taste in terms of like how you like videos to come across. Some people like them warmer, some people like them cooler. I just like it as accurate as possible. So just one last word about this light. I decided to go with an LED light because they're cooler and they last longer. So if you get a light that has any kind of like bulb. Those are gonna be a lot hotter and they're not going to last quite as long. You're gonna to have to replace those bulbs every once in a while. LEDs last a long, long time and they give off a lot less heat. And before I moved to LED lights, I had, you know, soft boxes with the big bulbs in there. Those were so hot. So I was really determined to figure out like equipment that I could use that would not make me sweat, that wasn't so hot, that really had accurate lighting. And it just landed on this Kino Flow Diva LED 30. I just love it. I love that I have one light that I have to deal with. That's it. I love that it's not burning hot. For a light this size, for the amount of light that it gives off, for it not to be like burning. I mean, it's there's warmth, there's definitely warmth, but for it not to feel like the temperature of the sun in my room is such a plus. It's, it's really, I can't go back. So that's the light that I use. That's why I got it. It's um, just something, you know, watching, like Nikki Tutorials did a beauty room tour. Um, she has Kino Flow lights, but she has a different model. I think she has like celebs celeb 200s and they're shorter and i think she has like a bunch of them in front of her who else has done oh desi perkins she did like a beauty room filming setup uh kind of video and she has i think is it two of these i think maybe she has two of these one on top of the other again i don't have the room for that and these lights are expensive and she said something in her video that i was like yes but she basically at a time when she didn't have a lot of money she like invested all of her money into one of these lights and she was like it made all the difference and i can't i can't echo that loud enough it really really makes all the difference so anyway like i said i'll get into what i think you should invest your money in towards the end of this video so enough about the lighting my microphone um so my microphone is just a shotgun mic. Um, I have it on this like boom arm that like clamps to a table that I happen to have over there. You can get a boom arm that's like on a tripod, but I was really trying to minimize equipment that just sits on my floor because it really gets overwhelming. So I have it clamped to a table that's actually sitting in front of me uh, when I'm filming. And so I just have it like kind of hanging over. Um, it's a Sennheiser MKE 600. And I was debating between this one and it was a Rode microphone. I don't remember the model, but it seemed like those were just two just really popular, fairly affordable shotgun mics. So I actually found a video where um, the YouTuber was kind of comparing the two. And so he was playing his voice over the Rode microphone and then his voice just through this Sennheiser microphone. And I just really liked the way it sounded through this microphone more than the Rode, even though I think the Rode is more popular. Um, I decided to go with this one. I just, I just personally like the sound of it better. So I've been really happy with it. You guys have always mentioned how, how crisp I sound. So I love it. I don't have anything much else to say about it. Oh, except someone asked me how far away the microphone is from me. So it's, it's right here. I don't know. So it is right here. Um, so I just have it right out of the frame. I want to say it's probably just maybe a little bit more than a foot away from my mouth, but it is up above. I used to have the microphone sitting in front of me below. I thought that was great. It was right in the middle. I thought, oh, okay. But every time I put my hands up, which you do a lot, if you're swatching, if you're putting makeup on or whatever, I felt like I was blocking the microphone. Occasionally I block this microphone, but a lot less because it's above me. But if I turn this way, like my voice definitely gets a little bit quieter. You can definitely hear that I'm further away from the microphone. So I wish I could kind of just have it hanging like over my head, then it would be pretty even no matter which direction I was in. But 
this is the best I can do right now. <laughs> so that is it. So again, I will list um, this microphone, everything else down below in my description box. And then a very popular question I got, which I was kind of surprised at because my editing is not fancy at all. And I have a MacBook Pro. Um, I actually just had to get a new computer because my old one just died. But I have a MacBook Pro. It's relatively new. It's a 16 inch and I use iMovie like 95% of the time. Occasionally I'll use Final Cut Pro because it does have a few things in there that I like, but generally I just like iMovie. It's really, really simple. It does what I need. And like I mentioned, when I am editing video, all I'm doing is just kind of like cutting out things that I don't want in my video. So I just use iMovie. Everything I've learned about iMovie, I learned off of YouTube. I just do searches for it, like iMovie add music and you know, a, a ton of videos will pop up to let you know. So that's it. I don't do any kind of correction while I edit. I don't do color correction. I don't do sound correction. It's something that I didn't want to depend on because it can take a very, very long time if you want to keep like tweaking your color and tweaking your sound and all of that. Me personally, my philosophy is I want to get as much of it right as I'm filming so that when I edit, I just have very, very little to do. So for me, it's really about saving time that if I get it right when I'm filming and I don't have to like spend the time editing it, all the better. All right, so let's move into what I've used and what I would recommend a beginner YouTuber to use. Now, if you're like straight up beginner, you haven't made one video yet, it's just something that you're thinking about, um, the, the idea of equipment really kind of terrifies you. I get it. I would say start really, really small. Start with natural lighting and start with like your iPhone or whatever phone, Samsung phone, whatever you have, start with that. There are a lot of YouTubers out there that just use their phones. Uh, my friend Kate the Great Beauty, she just uses her iPhone and I think her videos look great. And she uses, I think she has a ring light now, but when she started, she stood in front of her window. She set up her little uh, iPhone on like a little tripod. I think even she, maybe she even leaned it on something and that was it. That's how she made her videos. And then eventually I think she added a ring light, which you know, you can do. But I think if you are just toying with the idea of doing YouTube, you're not exactly sure yet, start really, really small because you may hate the idea of being on video, you may hate the idea of being on YouTube. It may not be what you thought it was. And the last thing you want is to invest any money into equipment that you're just not gonna use. So that would be my recommendation for someone who has not started at all. But if you are someone that has put up a few videos and you're like, I really like this. This, I could, I could see myself doing this. I'm having a lot of fun. Then I would say it's time to upgrade. Of course, if you can, if you have the room, if you have the budget. And the camera I would recommend is the Canon M50. It's the camera that I've been using. Sorry, it's over there, I'm staring at it. It's the camera I've been using to vlog and I really, really love it. Hold on, actually, let me grab it. All right, so here's the Canon M50. I have this teeny tiny um, Rode microphone on top. I got that because, you know, I've been starting to vlog a little bit more. And of course, I'll link this down below in my description box. But this camera is, as far as cameras go, fairly inexpensive. And I decided to get this instead of the really popular Canon GX7, I think is the model, the one that everyone uses to vlog. Um, but I decided to go with this because I like being able to have this like external mic on there because it really does make a difference. Um, and this monitor swings out to the side where with the GX7, it swings up and if you have this like little external mic, it's like one or the other. And I really didn't like that. So I like the fact that this swings out to the side. So this is one of those micro four thirds cameras that Canon has. So they have these like little M lenses um, that you can change out. They have like a few out there. They're, it's definitely growing because these cameras are getting more and more popular. Um, but I have the one that it came with. This is a 15 to 45 millimeter and it's just, it's really, really great. I think it's wonderful. It's small, it's compact. It uses an SD card. Um, it has a rechargeable battery. It's just a very, very uh, dependable uh, little Canon camera. So I have been loving it. I think my vlogs look pretty decent. Previously, I was vlogging just on my iPhone, but I realized the footage, the sound wasn't great. And so I wanted to upgrade to something a little bit nicer. So I got this 
And I really think this would be fantastic for just straight up YouTube videos too. So this would be my recommendation for anyone just kind of, you know, looking to invest just a little bit more in their camera equipment. This is what I would go for. If you do a search on YouTube for Canon M50, there are a ton, I'm gonna say this a lot in this video, there are a ton of videos out there that will share with you some of the pros, some of the cons of this camera. I really, really enjoy it. So this is the one I would recommend. In terms of lighting, you obviously probably don't want to invest in such a gigantic Kino Flow light when you're starting out. So you do have a lot of options. Um, I started out with soft boxes. I had, did I have a ring light? Now I can't even remember. It's been a while. I think I had a ring light and some soft boxes. Soft boxes are those big, you probably have seen them in other YouTuber, you know, filming setup uh, or other filming setup uh, videos, but they're really big. They're generally square. Sometimes they can be rectangular, whatever. Um, and there's a bulb inside and then the soft box is actually what's uh, surrounding it. But they're gigantic. They're really, really big. I used to have two of them sitting here and then I had a ring light in the middle. I hated how big they were. I hated how hot they were. So that's when I decided to move to like LED lights. And I think LED lights have just become more and more popular and there's just a ton on Amazon. So they generally look like this. They look like these panels. Um, and then there's just this like plastic covering. They're, they're fairly inexpensive. And then there's all these like LED lights on there. Some of them you can change the power, like the dimmer. Uh, you can change the temperature of the light, you know, how yellow it is or how white it is. And I think right before um, I got my Kino Flow, I had four of these LED lights kind of all around me. But I think what you can do is you can start out with two of these LED panels, one on either side of you, and then get a ring light. And the ring light that I used that I really enjoyed actually is this um, Diva Ring Light Nebula. That's this guy. And this one is the LED version. So Diva Ring Light is the brand and they have a bunch of different models. So this one is a little bit more expensive than the other ring lights that use like a bulb. Um, but again, I just like the LED situation. I think um, they're just a lot cooler. They last a lot longer. And as far as ring lights go, this one is amazing. It gives off pretty even lighting. So in terms of, again, starting out, let's say you're just moving from using natural lighting. You know, you don't have any lighting whatsoever. I would say, maybe get this ring light first um, and then use as many lamps as possible. Just bring them all into your area, turn them on, you know, behind you, all around you, because what you want is like even lighting in your room. If you have, let's say you're sitting in a dark room and you just have this on, you're gonna have a really bright face and just a really dark room. It's gonna look like you're sitting in like a windowless basement. So you don't really want that. It just looks odd and you're not gonna get like a really accurate uh, depiction of like makeup or anything like that. So I would say this is the first step and just get as much lighting as you can into your room. If you can take that next step, I would say um, purchase two of these. They usually come in sets. You can get a set of like two or four of these um, LED lights and then you can set two of those up next to you. So that would be my recommendation in terms of lighting. Um, all of these things are fairly light so you can you know, set them up, break them down very, very easily, unlike this uh, Kino Flow Monster. One last thing I wanna mention, I think this is the last thing I wanna talk about. I've been talking for a while and I think this is probably a lot of information. So yes, this will be the last thing I mention. But when it comes to lighting, what you don't want is very, very strong, stark lighting. What you want is you want it diffused, you want it indirect. Um, and again, if you look at Desi Perkins filming setup video, uh, she has like a lot of lights in front of her, um, but her husband, Steven, um, he talks about how he puts like, you know, sheets and diffusers and uh, like all this stuff in front of those lights so that it looks softer, so that it's diffused, so that the light doesn't look like just a spotlight on her face. So I definitely want to recommend getting some of this like white kind of like polyester material. It's basically what soft boxes are made out of. And what I used to do uh, when I was using these lights is I would just cut a little square off and just 
kind of drape it in front. Sometimes I would drape it in front of the ring light. The ring light has like a diffuser around it, but sometimes if it was kind of close to my face and I felt like it was too strong, I would put some of this cloth over it. And using cloth like this is much better than just turning the light down because you want the power of the light. You just don't want it all. <laughs> on your face in one spot. So there's like a slight difference to turning down the light or covering it with sheet like that. So that's just one tip. Of course, you know, this could be an entire video and there's, again, there's tons of videos on YouTube. So I hope this video helped you um, at least a little bit in terms of where to get started. Uh, so let me know if you have any questions down below in the comment section. Again, you know, I'm not a videographer, um, so I'll try and answer your questions as best as I can. But again, I cannot emphasize how many talented people there are out there creating YouTube videos about all this stuff. So give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video.